Arabia, an ancient and mysterious land. Underneath Saudi's Islamic regime and its rich oil resources lies many untold truths. These discoveries recently led many to believe this land to be in fact the lost land of Moses. Join us as we reveal to you the biblical proofs behind these sites. God's words are infallible and that his stories are true. I present to you the real Mount Sinai, unveiling the secrets of Arabia. For centuries, the presently accepted location of the mountain being the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt has been debated by many scholars. The early chapters of Exodus tell us in fact that Mount Sinai is in Midian, which is in Saudi Arabia. At age 40, Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh in Egypt and dwelt in the land of Midian. Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to the mountain of God. This is where Moses encountered God in the burning bush. God gave him an important command to return here after setting free the Israelites. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve me on this mountain. In 1984, archaeologist Ron Wyatt went to Midian, where he also believed he would find the real Mount Sinai. Accused of espionage by the Saudi authorities, him and his two sons were held for 78 days in custody. Despite this, Ron Wyatt was able to share with the world unprecedented footage of these biblical sites. They are to this day fenced off by the Saudi government at archaeological sites. These discoveries must no longer remain hidden and must be displayed for the world to see. There have been many hypotheses surrounding the location of the Red Sea crossing. The Nueva beach is by far the best candidate. With a surface area capable of holding millions of people, we can imagine the children of Israel trapped between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's armies. Scuba diving research and underwater drones have found distinct Egyptian chariot parts in the depths of the Red Sea. This is where God delivered Israel from Egypt and made the way for them into Arabia. And they came to Elim where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, and they camped there by the waters. The first stop is Elim, an oasis just by the shore of the Red Sea, where the children of Israel would find water to drink. wells can still be spotted along the oasis. 
some are even used by the locals to this day. There are numerous date palm trees in Elim, which makes it the perfect spot for the children of Israel to find rest. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on the journey from the wilderness of sin. And the people thirsted there for water, and they complained against Moses and said, Why is it you have brought us out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will stand there before you on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. At the northwest of Mount Sinai is a split rock of Horeb. Standing on the crest of a hill, the rock stands 50 feet tall and can easily be seen from a great distance. Oh, it's incredible. It is incredible. It is absolutely massive. We can imagine millions of gallons of water flowing out into the nearby camp. The rock itself shows signs of water erosion. Ancient petroglyphs can be found at this site, including shapes of sandals. Moses rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. A structure can still be found today at the base of Mount Sinai. Its particularity is that it is made out of uncut stones as God commanded. If you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it out of cut stones. This is where the animals would be kept in line, ready to be sacrificed. The remains of the 12 pillars can still be seen almost 3,000 years later at the foot of Mount Sinai. In between Mount Sinai and the altar, we notice a cave looking down the valley. The prophet Elijah traveled for 40 days and 40 nights. He kept going until he arrived at the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. Behind the Elijah cave is a leveled area. This is where God told Moses, Aaron and the 70 elders to go up. They saw the God of Israel. Under his feet appeared to be a pavement of sapphire, just as clear as the sky itself. 
God did not harm these leading men of Israel, but they ate and drank in His presence. Shortly after, Moses was then told to continue climbing the mountain with Joshua. This is where God gives him the tablets with the law and the Ten Commandments. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain. Could the blackened peak of Mount Sinai be evidence for God's holy presence? When the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. The Golden Calf Altar has been recognized as an archaeological site by the Saudi government. They erected a fence around it in an effort to preserve the site. On the ground, we can see large boulders that comprise the base of the altar. These figures resemble to Egyptian god Athor, the god of prosperity. The bull was placed in high esteem in Egypt, where the children of Israel were slaves for 400 years. So they created images that were natural to their rebellious heart. The judgment of these idolaters were great, as 3,000 men fell by the sword that day. An enclosed primitive graveyard can be found not so far from the Golden Calf Altar. This is most likely the location where they buried the corpse of the idolaters. Here are a few more proofs of Israel's journey through Arabia. If you look here, we can see a vandalized menorah. Thankfully, someone called Dr. Kim came here in 2006 and he managed to take a picture of this menorah before it was vandalized. It was a seven branch chandelier right here. We're gonna show you the before and after picture. It is so incredible to see it here. This menorah was vandalized in an attempt to conceal evidence of Israelite presence in Arabia. The Hebrew pictographs in the region correspond with the letters of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, as we can see here with the letter Tav, Tet and He. The manna was like coriander seed and looked like gum resin. The people would gather it and grind it between two millstones or beat it in the mortar. So over here we can see a big rock with a huge dent in it. And uh, this was used to grind manna. So with a pestle and a mortar, this would be the mortar. Many of these mortars can be found around Mount Sinai. It is here at Mount Sinai that Moses received instruction to build a tabernacle. 
It was to be built from the heavenly pattern with each object representing God's plan of salvation for man. This is where the priests would reconcile man to their Creator. God is a holy God, therefore in the Old Covenant, only one man could enter into the Holy of Holies, where God's presence dwelt. The good news is that Jesus made a new covenant with us. The tabernacle is now merely a symbolic representation of how one must be reconciled to their Creator. To enter in covenant with God, a sinner must first repent from all his sins. Jesus Christ gave himself as the ultimate sacrifice of atonement, but he still requires you to repent and keep his commandments. It is written to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. The lava represents the baptism of water by which an adult washes away his sins after he repents. After this, one can then enter into the kingdom of God. The seven branched menorah and the bread represent the words of Jesus. They nourish us and guide our footsteps. The incense represents our prayers continually being lifted up towards God's throne. We must receive the gift of the Holy Spirit of God who will lead us into all truth as Jesus promised us. You do not find God in a man-made building God wants to make you His holy temple. God is still a holy God, so we must not allow anything to defile us. As the law and commandments were engraved on stone, it has been prophesied that one day they will be written on our hearts for us to keep them out of love for our Savior. All these events happened to Israel to serve as an example. They have been written down as a warning for us who live in the end of the ages. God made a covenant with Israel at Mount Sinai, but they were not faithful until the end and they were not saved. Today, God is calling the whole world to repentance. Jesus is the only way to the Father and He's calling you to give up your life of sin to follow Him. Like Israel had to forsake the slavery of Egypt, you must forsake the slavery of sin that leads to death and destruction. He wants you to be holy as God is holy. And then you must wash away your sins in baptism. God breaks the bondage of sin and death over your life. Never look back on your old life of sin like Israel looked back on Egypt and they died in the desert. Even though they saw the glory of God, they couldn't enter the promised land. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. Many will try to enter but will not be able. Not everyone that says Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of God. Only the ones who do the will of my Father in heaven. And God promised to the overcomers, 
I will give them the crown of eternal life. I will be their God and they will be my sons.